Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We are learning the chapter Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants. Today we will discuss pollen pistil interaction and fertilization. So what is pollen pistil interaction? From the heading itself it is evident. Interaction between the pollen and the pistil. That happens immediately after pollination. So all the events starting from the landing of pollen on a stigma till it reaches the ovule, all the pollen tube grows and enters into the ovule are called a pollen pistil interaction. So once a pollen lands on the stigma, the pistil has to decide whether it is compatible or incompatible. If it is compatible pollen only, it will be allowed to grow or it will be accepted by the pistil. Now how can it accept it? It is through certain chemical components of the pollens which are landing on the stigma. It will determine whether it is competent. So if it is a suitable pollen or a competent pollen, then the pollen tube will germinate through this style. You know the exile is the outer covering. It has got germ pores in it. So through the germ pore, the vegetative cell is coming down. That is forming the pollen tube. It has got the tube nucleus at the tip, the nucleus of the vegetative cell which is actually acting as a guiding nucleus. Now what is there inside? The generative nucleus is there, with, uh, the generative cell is coming down now and we have already mentioned in 60% of the plants the division happens after coming inside the pollen tube into two male gametes whereas in 40% prior to pollen germination itself this happens. So these two are called a male gametes. So since pollen carries male gametes, we call pollen grain as a what the male gametophyte. Now the pollen tube grows through this and enters through the micropylar end most of the cases and the male gametes will be entering into the egg cell through the synergids. We learn synergies have filiform apparatus to guide the pollen tube so it will be released into the egg. So all these processes till it enters the ovule are together called a pollen pistil interaction. We are all familiar with fertilization. Male gamete fuses with the female gamete to form zygote that process is called a fertilization. It has got one more name called a syngamete. Now what is double fertilization? That is fertilization happening twice or two fusions are happening. So what is the prerequisite for a double fertilization to happen? Two gametes should be there. And we saw during pollen pistil interaction when the pollen tube grows down, how many male gametes are there? Two male gametes. So of course there will be two fusion. So that will result in a fertilization called a double fertilization. Let us see which are the two different fusion happening here. Once the pollen enters through the synergid, it will release the male gamete. The first male gamete will fuse with this egg cell. So the male gamete which is haploid, that is why I have written here N, combines with the female gamete which is also haploid to form a diploid cell called a zygote. This is the usual fertilization happening in all the sexually reproducing organisms and it is otherwise called a syngamy. Whereas one more male nucleus is coming, it will go and fuse with these two polar nuclei. This is the central cell of the embryo sac. Inside that, two polar nuclei or secondary nuclei are present. So the male gamete, which is haploid, will go and fuse with two polar nuclei, which are actually N plus N diploid. Two are there, two haploid nuclei. Together it will form a triploid structure called a primary endosperm nucleus. So the nucleus after the fusion of three nuclei is called a primary endosperm nucleus or pen whereas this cell will become primary endosperm cell. Central cell is becoming primary endosperm cell. So since here three nuclei are fusing, this fusion is called a triple fusion. So since syngamy and triple fusion are happening, we call it as double fertilization. So please understand, one male gamete fuses with the egg cell to form syngamy. Zygote is the resultant structure whereas the other male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei by a fusion called a triple fusion to produce primary endosperm nucleus. So since two fusions are involved it is called a double fertilization. Fertilization is over now post fertilization changes we can discuss. Post fertilization events include endosperm formation and embryo formation. So zygote usually becomes the embryo later develops into the new plant or the new offspring. 
But for the zygote while developing, it needs nutrition. So to provide nutrition, the endosperm tissue is developing. Once the double fertilization is over, the embryo development will wait or it will have a small delay because first the endosperm will develop. Otherwise, the developing zygote will not get nutrition. So we are going to discuss now endosperm development. So that's a question. Endosperm development precedes embryo development. Why? Because endosperm is providing nourishment to the developing embryo. So for that, the embryo should, endosperm should develop first. So endosperm uh, nucleus we learn, primary endosperm nucleus is the resultant nucleus of the triple fusion. So it will undergo division to form the endosperm tissue. Endosperm what is a ploidy? Triploid. Okay. Here three types of endosperm formation are there. You are studying only one for your board examination, free nuclear. Those who are preparing for NEET should understand the other two also. So first is free nuclear division which is the most common type of endosperm development. So here what happens is, suppose this is a central cell in which or the primary endosperm cell now it has become in which the triploid endosperm nucleus form that is pen form. So the pen will undergo repeated mitosis to form several nuclei. But gradually they recede to the periphery leaving the place at the center or a large vacuum in the center. So till now there is no cytoplasmic division. Usually we know once karyokinesis or the nuclear division gets over, immediately the cell wall will form. But here that is not happening, only free nuclear division. Now after this, the from the side or the periphery, the cytokinesis will occur. That means cellular formation starts. Finally, resulting in the cellular endosperm. So first free nuclear division followed by the cell wall formation that is called a, what the free nuclear type of endosperm development. This is common in coconut rice, wheat etc. The second type is called a cellular. Cellular means like typical division. First the cell nucleus will divide. As soon as the nucleus divides it will form the cell or the cell division also cytokinesis also happens so it is forming cellular endosperm uh, third type is called a helobial helobial type is very common in uh, monocots uh, example we can say valisneria which we learned about hydrophilia right so in helobial type what happens is uh, first the cell will divide into two and cytoplasm also divides making two cells but they are unequal but after that only first is cellular division after that what happens? Only free nuclear division happens. Cells will form only towards the end making it the cellular type finally. So these are the three types of endosperm types. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion. Thank you for watching my video.